Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays, your weekly update on Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. So, what have we done to, what have we done this week? Well, the main thing I'd say, that, or the, the main thing that leaps out for, from, for me for what I've done, is I've put in this core mining drill here. <coughs> and it's, yes, okay, it's just one little thing. But it's been placed on one of the core mining seams, which look like this, these vent, these sort of venting holes in the ground. And this is the a new thing for um, Space Exploration 0.6. In 0.5, you could whack down your core mining drills wherever you liked, and they'd pull out pull out all kinds of resources out of the ground. Whereas in 0.6, there are a certain number of these core mining drill points that spawn that are, are generated around the map as you as you start doing things, and those are the only places that you can now put a core mining drill. So this core mining drill is pulling out, is, is, is mining away merrily like this, putting all the core chunks it's digging up straight into this chest here, um, because. This is the fastest way to get the stuff out of it. And then we're then using a loader here to put them onto this belt. Now, this isn't quite uh, running this machine at 100%, because as you may notice, if you watch it for a, f a moment or two, you'll see, yeah, like that, it occasionally stops for a, for a fraction of a second, because this, this chest is basically completely full. We're producing the core chunks slightly faster than we're, we're able to deal with them, because it's going out on a yellow belt. So... There are a few things I could do here. I could put in another belt uh, running along here and feeding in somewhere up there. I could upgrade this to a red belt. Those are both possibilities. Both would have worked absolutely fine. Um, but I haven't bothered with either of them just yet. I, I probably will, but I haven't done, done so yet. So that then passes it around here, and then up, up here, and the idea of the, this, this sort of gap here is because at, so eventually I expect to have a lot more columns of these of these, um, of these these pulverizers dealing with a lot more uh, core fragments, and that will allow us to run everything much more quickly, get a lot more of everything out of the ground and, and basically just make more make more get more free resources essentially which is what this is all about but what we're doing along here is we're, we're then we're using splitters and we're feeding them straight into the side of the core miners here we don't actually need to use loaders for this uh, inserters will be absolutely fine because if you look at the rate this is going in there's a big pause at the moment and then some pause into it and then it stops again so actually even probably certainly a blue insert would be fine maybe even a yellow one would be but I wasn't quite sure how quickly they go in so I thought I might as well just build it with loaders because I mean, to be honest loaders aren't exactly that expensive and then these things well then we generate absolutely massive numbers of different things which is crazy so if we have a something dark if we have a look at this <clears throat> you can see that we're taking in yeah a load of core fragments we're taking in 20 core fragments at a time but we're turning that into eight iron ore eight copper ore four coal eight stone a third of a uranium roughly eight raw raw, uh, raw rare metals and then crude oil mineral water water and pyroflux which is ridiculous loads of different things going in here it's crazy a uh, load coming out of here so that means we've then got this We've got, well, coming out of it, we've got this belt that's full of all kinds of different materials that are all then just being pumped up here, um, which we then need to deal with, sort out, do something sensible with. There's a uranium, so yeah, every so often we'll get about one every once in every three times it runs, we'll get a uranium out, so there's a few of them up there. But also, we've got all these liquids to deal with. So, on this machine, there's uh, mineral water coming out the top, there's pyroflux coming out here, crude oil here, water coming out here, and then there's a couple of extra outputs for the uh, for the uh, mineral water and the and the crude oil up here as well. So it's just there's just so much stuff coming out of these things. Um, <clears throat> that we've then got all these rows of pipes coming down here, leading eventually to a set of small tanks down here. And now we're running into a little bit of a problem here. So we've got we've got too much crude oil, which is a weird thing weird problem to have, but we are gonna have to deal with this at some point. But I'll come back to that in a moment. So yes, we've got all of the different solids coming out here, going onto this onto this single belt, and we're doing something a bit different from anything I've ever done before up here, because now we have loaders, we're able to shove just all of these resources straight into this warehouse, and then have multiple belts for each one of these coming out of, the, out, out of it, and each of these has a loader on it, and these are all, all these loaders are set up with filters, so you can see we're getting the, um, the copper coming out on this one, we're getting the the iron ore coming out on this one, we're getting the stone coming out on this one, and so on. And this is this seemed like a much much easier way of sorting stuff than the way I was doing it on the um, in my previous space exploration run, where I used lots and lots of splitters because I didn't have loaders in that run. So yes, this is much 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 better, much nicer. It's more, much more much more space efficient and it also means that you don't need to worry about um, running into having too much stuff on any of your input belts as you sort of split them out across because that, that was a bit of a pain with the um, with the other other method I was using whereas this one is much much more efficient although you do get this rather weird effect on the warehouse where it's just flickering between all the different things it's got in it because at least in theory you never get any any stuff building up in the warehouse it all gets passed out as fast as it comes in because it's just being sorted and then dealt with elsewhere and this is just supposed to be a sorter 
you're not supposed to have a, um, a stockpile building up in here. The only reason I've used a warehouse for this rather than something much smaller is because I want us to be able to expand this in the future to the point where we might have several belts of, the, of these resources coming out. So if we take another look at one of these machines, which, which, which one? So yeah, we're getting out most of iron, copper and stone. Oh, and raw, raw rare metals as well. So we're getting out loads of each of those. So I want to have potential, I want to have room for this to expand quite a lot and we'll probably upgrade these to blue belts at some point and then probably also upgrade these to blue belts at some point as well. But the idea is we're going to then have enormous quantities of these flooding out and, and then they, these are all going to sensible places. So in the case of this one, we've got, all the, we've got all the raw materials that need to be smelted coming up here, going across here, splitting out, and we've got them splitting out into, as you can see, iron, copper, stone, rare metals. Uh, and then these are being fed over here, uh, where they're going into, into these storehouses. Now, because these ones are free, we want to use these by preference. So we've got a, wire, we've got a cable uh, condition set up here, which is basically saying if this is more than a certain amount full, then, cut, then stop these feeding any more in, because this is the priority. We want to use these first, because, as I said, they're free. But at the moment, because this is basically empty, we don't have enough iron yet, it hasn't backed up, and we're not producing this as fast as we're smelting it, we've also got additional iron coming in from down here from this station, where we've got trains coming in, dropping off iron ore here, that's what they're bringing over from the normal mine, and then it's being fed up here. Um, I'll talk in a moment about why there's an extra rail, set of rails there. And then this is being set, fed up into a smelting system here. Now, we're, we're doing this all fed with very, rather early game tech at this point. So as you can see here, we've got a, um, we've got, we've got a smelting system that's based around the, uh, the, the steel furnaces, which are they're a bit quicker than the, uh, the, the basic uh, stone furnaces. Sure, I think they're twice as quick. But they're not as good as the electric furnaces because you also need to pipe, pipe fuel in, which means you have pollution coming out here, uh, more pollution coming out here rather than being able to concentrate it in one specific area. It also, they're also not as quick, not as efficient. You can't put modules in them. Uh, there's, and, and yeah, as I say, you need, to, you, need, you need to supply fuel for them. So there's lots of extra things to worry about there, which means they're not ideal and we'll want to upgrade them at some point. And then even further down the line, I suspect we're going to want to then upgrade again. So we've got iron ore, which turns into can be made into iron plates. You can do that in um, a stone furnace. You can do it in a smel uh, yeah, You can do it in a um, steel furnace twice as quickly. You can do it in an electric furnace at the same speed as the steel furnace, but it doesn't require it doesn't require fuel and can be moduled. So that's better because of that. Or you can then do it in an industrial furnace, which is twice as quick as the electric furnace, but it's a much bigger building. Um, but it's twice twice as quick, so. That's nice, um, and I think it puts you can put more modules in it. You've then got an advanced furniture I don't know anything about because that isn't that's a new thing for Crastorio, and then the thermodynamics facility, which is the same as basically the same as an industrial furnace, but for doing it in space. However, there's also oh, it's interesting. Um, it's advanced assembling machines can turn ores directly into iron products. That's very interesting, uh, but not what I was looking for. This is what I was looking for. Yeah, so there's also okay. This is this is now significantly more complicated than it was in space exploration. So I don't know whether this is a 0.6 thing or a Crastorio thing. But now there is also an alternative method of making iron, where you turn iron ore into enriched iron, then you turn the enriched iron into molt, molten iron with pyroflux, or you can turn it straight into plates. But probably better turn it into into molten iron, then you can turn the molten iron into iron ingots. And then you can turn the iron ingots into iron plates. And this probably, haven't done the maths, but almost certainly, this is going to be a much, much more efficient recipe. I've seen this sort of thing before in Angel Bobs, um, and to a ex smaller extent in Industrial Revolutions too. Um, but this is going to be the same sort of thing where if you if you if you um, decide you're going to go through the whole process, you can get far more iron out at the end from the, from um, each iron ore that goes in. But you also need various other inputs like. Um, pyroflux and acid um, acid and water interestingly uh, in order to do that and you need far more production steps going through the, through the chain in order to, to do it so it's going to be far more efficient and effective but it's going to be a lot more complicated to set up so it's, it's, it's a more advanced game thing I mean it's, it's ore, en ore enrichment is actually not that far off that's a blue tech that's a blue science pack tech so um, yeah okay we can get onto that we can get onto that relatively soon because blue science is something I want to do fairly soon uh, so yeah, we've got we've then got the same sort of thing with going on with copper and stone, although there's some cliffs in the way because we we haven't quite got cliff explosives yet. But we've also got less stone and less de demand for bricks, so that's probably okay for now. Um, and we will eventually be having rare metals being done over here, and some somewhere we're going to also be doing glass and probably steel as well. So this smelting area is going to be expanding a long way, and we're going to need to deal with these biters over here. 
Um, so yes, I promised I'd talk about the uh, the reason there's two stations unloading into this. This isn't just so that you can get twice as many trains in and twice twice the unload rate. What we've got here is actually a high priority and a low priority system. So I mentioned earlier that we want to use up this this or, this iron ore first because it's going to be it's cheaper, it's free, and then we use up what comes out of the mines because that's more awkward. Now in the future. We're probably going to put in. We're going to put in additional um, core mining drills. Maybe one there. Um, maybe one there. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see where where it seems like a good idea at the time. Another one down there, and, and so on. So what we're probably going to do with these is we'll then link them up to the railway system, and we'll train the um, the core fragments from there over to about here, and put them into this uh, into this pulverizing system here. Feed them up these belts, and so on. So that's going to be fine. We don't need to, we don't need any extra cleverness for that. But one thing I've noticed that we did that I did in my previous space exploration run is I set up additional mining outposts on other planets. So if we went out to an iron planet, which we don't know about yet because we haven't launched any satellites, we can't look at the universe explorer. But when we get an iron planet or an iron asteroid belt or something like that, and we're bringing back huge amounts of um, iron ore from there. We're going to want to feed that in as preference from the stuff that's coming from the iron mines because iron mines on iron mines on Norvis are a pain because they, they they they're relatively small. Yes, okay, there's four five there's five million iron up here, but long term that's actually not that much. We're going to be getting through quite a lot of it, so we don't want to be forever going out setting up more iron mines because that's a pain. So instead, if we ship in the iron ore uh, from from somewhere out in space where they get where you've got some really truly massive iron patches, we're talking hundreds of millions, maybe more then you only need to set it up once and it'll last you for ages and we can then have a spaceship perhaps landing maybe here and unloading all of that iron ore and then putting it into a train and that will be called a high priority iron train and that will take the iron to the other side here and unload it into here and then these trains will only be called when there's a certain amount of when there's less than uh, when, when you start to run run low on the high priority iron, so we'll bring it. So we'll run as much as we can off the high priority iron, and then if if well, actually no, well firstly we'll run it off the local iron uh, that comes in here because that's really easy. Doesn't doesn't go, isn't going to take rocket fuel or space logistics or anything like that. It's just going to take a little bit of electricity. We'll use that first. Then we'll use the stuff that's been brought in by spaceships because that's a much lower logistics effort because you don't need to go out building up new iron mines all the time and fighting the biters. Then after that we'll use the low priority iron coming from here. Now on the other hand, if we decide we hate the um, the logistics, the uh, interstellar or no interplanetary logistics, and we don't want to be bringing the iron from somewhere else, there's no reason why we can't then instead decide we're going to swap that over and make the Norvian iron the high priority one. But I think we probably won't want to do that. And this is just done through through station names because as I've uh, said, we're not using LTN in this playthrough because we thought it'd be an interesting challenge not to. So this is a prioritization system that doesn't use LTN. So we've got we have stations here called Iron Ore Drop Low and Iron Ore Drop High. And so the places where we'll be bringing a high priority iron ore drop from will have iron ore pickup high or iron ore pickup low for the mines. And that way you can you can keep everything uh, balanced and ticking over. And we've got these these things here, which I, if I run over there, this is set up. So how, how, how is this working? This is something that Tristan set up. So I'm not quite sure how exactly how this is set up. So we're OK, we're multiplying that by minus nine and we've got a a, 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 um, a threshold here. So if there's so there, if there if this goes less than if there's less than thirty two thousand iron in iron ore in here, then this will go this will divide the amount we're short of it by 4000 and output that as an L which will set the train limit on here so if there's less than 32000 then it'll divide the amount there's less than 32000 of by 4000 in order to decide how many trains we need does that make sense so if there was so at the moment for example there's basically none in here so we're subtracting 32000 from it um no we're sorry we're negating it subtract then then subtracting it from 32,000 then here we've got 31,000 being fed in so we're outputting a signal of seven and that means we're trying we're asking for seven trains to come over and and join the queue in the stacker here for of which there's room for four but let's 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 gloss over that for now so we're asking for seven trains worth of iron to be brought over to fill this up to the point where the high priority factory is full on the other side this is only set to 16,000 and so that means if we had 20,000 iron ore in here then only this one would be asking for trains to come in this one wouldn't be so as you can see here it's the same setup we're, we're, we're multiplying by minus one and then we're dividing by 4,000 um, and outputting that as, over to here so this one only has this one has a train limit set to four at the moment so this is asking for four trains worth this one is asking for well this one isn't set up completely um, but would be asking for eight trains worth 
So you see, you see how that works. If we get at the moment, if we're asking for less to be brought in on this side, um, and then when this gets up to a certain amount and is over the threshold, we won't be asking for any to be brought in on on this side. We'll only be asking for it to be brought in there. And then when that gets over the threshold, we won't be asking for any to be brought in at all, in order to make sure that the train doesn't get stuck here. So yeah, there's. <laughs> it's it's fairly complicated, but I believe it should work, and it's it's sort of I'm hoping it's a sort of an elegant level of complexity rather than a brain melting level of complexity. We've also get then obviously got the um, the iron ore after it's been cooked, it comes back down out here, put into these warehouses here, and then we're we're, re we're ready for trains to come over. We that, at some point there will be signals from here to here telling the uh, t telling to own, uh, the system to only send trains over when there is enough iron in these warehouses for it to be picked up. But that appears to have not been done yet, so that's obviously on the uh, to do list because this area is clearly not quite finished. Okay, I should probably assign a little bit of credit for the, uh, for the for this sort of area. So basically, everything below the belts was done by Tristan, all the train stuff, and everything above the belts was done by Mike. The stuff in the middle, I think, was a little bit of a joint effort, but to be honest, that's just laying down belts and then putting in some of these storehouses to act as buffer systems. So um, credit where it's due, but there's not a huge amount of credit for just putting down belts. <laughs> But it just does all look quite neat. I mean, I'm generally impressed with the way this is all, all, all come together. So yeah, well done there. The only the only problem is we've got a little bit of a backlog of the uh, of the rare metals here. The rare metals are not as rare as advertised. So we've filled up two storehouses here completely, and we don't have anything else to do. We do we don't have anywhere else to put these at the moment because the smelting facility for those hasn't been built yet. But you know, it's a work in progress. That's fine. We don't have a problem with that. It does mean that. This is now going to be backing up down here, and so as you can see, we've now got 1.4 thousand in here. But that doesn't matter because this is backed up completely because we've got too much oil, and we don't know what to, we don't know what to do with that. So yeah, there are, as I said, there are other things being produced by the um, by by the core mining at the moment, and these are all being fed out. Well, the pyroflux is being fed into this little power station down here, which is, to be honest, not using it up quite as quickly as it would need to. This needs to be extended, but I can I can I can do that. That's not a problem. So we're in here, we're taking in pyroflux and water, turning it into steam, and then using the steam to generate electricity, as you do. I need a lot more steam engines on this, but basically the basic concept works. Just need to boost that a little bit. And then, so the making steam is an interesting process. So um, that's, I'm so looking forward to getting the navigation satellite so I don't need to move around when I'm showing you things. Down here, we have, we have a recipe that takes in 1,000 water and 10 pyroflux. So it is literally 100 to 1, <laughs> which is a crazy amount of water. But sure, I guess it needs to produce 1,000 steam, so that's fair enough. And then it outputs a small chance of stone and iron ore and copper ore. So I've gone, well, that's easy enough to deal with, isn't it? You just you just stick it on a belt here and you feed it into this warehouse up here, along with absolutely everything else. Now, this is producing less than I sort of feared it might. So that, it, it doesn't really need to have an entire belt for just this. Just for this. I could feed it onto the bottom of here and it would probably be absolutely fine um but i haven't i put in a belt for now so so that's what we've got um so this takes the water and the pyroflux that's being produced by the core miners and turns it into steam which we can then turn into electricity now there's a slight problem with this this recipe so as i said it takes 100 times the amount of water that it does the pyroflux and if we look in here we're producing only producing four times the amount of water that we have for pyroflux, so it's not going to be enough. So we'd, we'd be using far more water than there is water available. So I fixed that in the simplest of possible ways. There is a pump up here that's pumping out into a tank um, through this through this pump, which is being turned off when there is more than 10,000 water in this tank. So we've got always got 10,000. We've got a level of 40 because 10,000 is 40% full. So this this pipe is always going to be held at 40% full. This tank is held at about 40% full, except there's a bit of it being sucked out by this system. I could put in some pumps to make this pump through a bit more, but I don't think there's any real need to. At the moment, it is working fine. I may need to raise the threshold a little bit if we find, when I put more of these in, if we're using the water a bit quicker. But generally, this system will, will be absolutely fine. We've just got the water being trickled down through this pipe to keep to keep the system running so and that's that's using up the excess pyroflux now the these are all these things are well except the water the the oil the pyroflux and the mineral water are all being then passed down the, these pipes here into stations down here so these can be taken away now if we zoom out a bit you can see that we have um, enough oil and enough mineral water for trains to come in that's why these are in white rather than purple I've gone in here and I've set the train limits to monitor for the amount of whatever the, f the fluid in is in this case. In this case, it's mineral water. When that goes over 50,000, so there's enough to fill a train, then it turn then it activates the station. Now, it's just, I've just, just, I've just noticed I haven't put the pumps in along here, so that's a bit of a fail. I need to do that before this will work. And I've done basically the same thing down here with the coal and the uranium as well. So these are being fed out of the um, the sorting 
warehouse I showed you earlier and then fed down into these warehouses here so we've got um, quite a bit down here and a bit less down here uh, and then here we've got again the same thing saying when there's when there's more than 4,000 in the in the warehouses you can call it you can summon a train <clears throat> and there is a train sat here ready and it's been loaded up as well but there's nowhere for it to go yet we don't have anywhere that actually needs coal um, fairly soon we will because this coal mine here is starting to struggle a little bit we're um, we're not producing the the, salt, the processed fuel quite as quickly as we would like so we might need to start training it in down here also notable is that the solid fuel is not being produced here as quickly as we would like so there are lots of places that need solid fuel but it's not being shipped out there so i think what we probably need is an area that is just a coal drop-off station many 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 of these fuel processors and then a um and then a processed fuel pickup thing i wonder if you can make processed fuel in other things processed fuel is made in no it's literally just made in a fuel processor okay so we can't <laughs> we can't go in and um, pro productivity module these because that would kind of be cheating i have to admit um there's and it's only made in these things so we, we can't oh actually no hang on oh you can also make it from solid fuel and methane gas but that's that's less useful because we don't have that <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. So there is, you can't. I was wondering if there'd be a fuel processor or something. No, sorry, uh, a, a, a more advanced fuel processor or a chemical plant or something that would let you make this a bit more, a bit even more efficiently. But I guess that'd be seriously OP. So it is, is not a thing. Right. So that covers basically that. I mean, that's what I've been doing. That was what I was doing during the last stream. I okay. I went out and did a bit of fighting, which it turns out I'm not very good at. But I, I mean, we all we all already knew that, didn't we? Right. <laughs> um, but, also, but basically, I spent all my I spent my time building up this uh, this core core fragment processing system and, and and building up this this as well, which needs a bit more of a boost, as I said. But the, the, for the power consumption here, we need to get rid of the oil, do something with that, maybe pass it through flamethrowers, more likely turn it into plastic, turn it into acids, turn it into oh we needed plastic, we need oh yeah, turn it into sulfur, so we can start making the explosives that we need to make the cliff explosives, so we can get rid of this sort of nonsense and basically just start expanding a bit more a bit more ruthlessly so yeah that's the that's that's one of the things for next time i mentioned in passing that oops i i was i i did a little bit of combat um i was doing quite a lot of that with, with mike he was helping and then later on i got fed up with it and uh, went off to do some actual you know building because this is factorio uh, and and i think mark kind of took over and, and brought his his standard efficiency to the to the combat so you'll notice over here that um it didn't go it, we had we had some issues should we say so mike got killed twice down here i got killed once uh, we lost another couple of mics up here because he was charging things then um then Mark started doing de defences properly, so he started putting in uh, nice defensive systems like this. So we've got power being generated to keep these inserters running, and presumably to keep the uh, stations running. I wonder how the uh, how the power consumption is. Oh, so actually, this is about right. Oh, because there's a couple of radars in there. That's using up all of the power. Fair enough. So that's that seems to be quite a balanced um, blueprint. I don't know whether he's thought about this, how carefully he's thought about it, or whether he just went in and dropped in a load of um, uh, wind turbines and it just came out to be about right. But anyway, this seems to be working nicely. We've got um, a wall going all the way across here to protect against the biters. We've got turrets in here. We've got an ammo feeding system, as is traditional, and another space on the other side of the belt for when we potentially need other ammunition in the future. Tanks for uh, when we bring in flamethrowers, all of that sort of stuff. This is a fairly standard defensive system. At the moment, it's horrendously under under spec because we don't have we don't really have the tech to do a proper defensive system here so we haven't got flame turrets yet i don't think and we haven't got oil processing to the stage where we really have fuel for flame turrets but more um more seriously we don't have robo ports in here because robots are whew, they're miles off in um, in crash area 2 and then in the new space exploration we have to go to space first so that means that as the biters attack here and start to damage the turrets, we won't be able to do automatic repairs, automatic rebuilding and that sort of thing. So we're going to have to keep a bit of an eye on all of this, but it's much better than what we would have had otherwise. And to be honest, the biters aren't that dangerous yet. They're mostly, almost, they're nearly all small biters. There are almost no spitters and there are a few but almost no medium biters as well and if we look at the pollution clouds we've, we're doing pretty well at defending our pollution clouds so we're going to get some attacks from here probably they're going to come around this way we might get some attacks from here sooner or later they're going to come up, up and attack this wall we're probably going to get them coming the biggest one we're going to get is from here and probably here coming around the top here and attacking this wall so i think this is the the area that's likely to take the most abuse and that might be why there's been dragon teeth here so yeah you can see we've had We've had some attacks up here. There's lots of dead small biters. And I own a spitter in there as well. So, yeah, we've got some problems there. And these are going to be very, very difficult to go in and clear out. Um, 
That said, if we develop the... Um, once we start making the um, better ammunition for the sniper rifle, it might become a bit more feasible to get in there. And if we can get uh, air scrubbers up and running, then we'll get rid of most a lot of this pollution and things will generally be a lot better. We shall, we shall see. So there's yeah, there's more more to do a lot around that area. But we have we have now got walls coming down here, across here, and across here. So we've defended we've now got this whole area defended from the east. We just need to now put in a probably a wall here uh, to get this whole peninsula and then clear out all of those biters. Then I imagine we're gonna put a wall across there, because it's too good a choke point not to. And then we've got this whole western, northwestern front up here. But at the moment, we keep, we're keep we doing quite a good job of holding the pollution in here. So may, maybe some more um, greenhouses down here to stop the pollution spreading. And then we can reckon on these biters will just will just live and let live for the time being. Because they're probably not going to attack us. But they are going to they might spread towards us a little bit. So we'll need to keep an eye on them. Um, so yeah, that was, so that's been uh, Mike and Mark. They've been doing a lot of expansion on there. Um, Mark, as part of the expansion, as I say, we're setting up all of these these turrets and these wall and these these sort of uh, ammo feeds and things like that. He's also set up the train system to feed them, so laying out all of this this railway this, this railway line. And presumably, there's a yes, an output re out, outpost resupply station here that at the moment is just filling up with ammunition that's coming in up this belt from an ammo production facility down here. Uh, we'll probably we may well upgrade that at some point. We'll see how it goes see if we need to. We're doing quite well at minimal combat so far, which is quite nice. But then this can eventually once we get the bots this this train can then take out all of the other stuff that we need like um extra bots for when they get shot down um <clears throat> extra walls extra turrets extra inserters just all of the stuff to rebuild all of the things that get blown up by when as the biters attack so we'll we, we'll fully automate defenses by that point but that is still some way off but we, we do already have the fuel tank there for uh, for taking the for taking fuel out for for um flame turrets so that's the, yeah this is all this is all going well well done there, Mark. Uh, what else has he done? He has also um, increased ammo production, as I said, and train tracks off to the east shore. Oh, he's massively increased belt production. He says he's quadrupled it, so that'll be um, about... I was going to say it'll be here, but... Oh, I, oh, I see. So the, I, set up, I set up with just this one making belts. He's now put in an additional three assembly machines along here. So, yeah, because we were getting through a lot of belts. You get someone will come over and they grab... They'd empty the chest. They take they take a thousand belts. They take two thousand belts, and it takes one machine a long old time to fill up fill that back up again. Then so so yep, that's very worth doing. Belts are up in high demand because we you know we're doing we're doing we're doing a bus which takes up a lot a lot of belts. Then every so often someone decides they want to do something like this, and yeah, that took a lot of belts. How many how many belts has this whole thing taken? Let's have a look. Yeah, okay, there we go. There's ten thousand belts in that system, um, in in in, the, in that ore processing thing alone. That's that's crazy. Um, so okay, that's why that's why Mike Marcus had to go in and quadruple steel production, uh, quadruple the belt production. He says he's also improved steel. So let's see if we can work out what he's done there. This looks pretty similar. Maybe we've got a better flow of um, iron coming in from up here. I'm I'm not sure. Um, but that could that yeah, if he's if he's improved the uh, the steel production by increasing the amount of iron that's coming through, that would that would make sense. I'm I'm not I'm not sure. Oh, there's some red belt in here. That's probably what it is. So maybe there's. Right, so when we have a, when we have a sudden surge in demand for steel, we can pull lots and lots of steel out of this chest very very quickly and make make the, sorry iron out of the chest very quickly and make the steel a bit quicker. So that's probably what he's done. And um, he's also been cleaning up old mining drills, so that's fine. Yeah, so this area around here is now a little bit tidier because we don't have abandoned mines. That's so yeah, that's that's nice. Mike has been um, updating radar coverage. Okay, so he's gone around and tidied up radar. So there's now the radars are a bit more evenly spaced out here. There's a bit of a gap here, so that there's another one going to be needed in here at some point. Um, but basically, we've got good radar coverage for nearly everything we care about. Bit of a gap there, but basically that's looking pretty good. Um, yes, as I said, he's done the core processing area. Oh yes, he automated steel furnace production in the wrong in the wrong place. So he puts it in in here, which is kind of horrible because this isn't supposed to be where we make stuff. Instead, we should do it over. Where is it? I did it somewhere. I, I, I oh yeah, here like this. So now now oh okay, well, yeah, we're making yes. Yeah, so now we're making. I, I wanted to make boilers and uh, steam engines, so I did that here. And I thought, well, I'm making these stone furnaces here, so I might as well make steel furnaces as well. And then maybe I don't know if I'm going to have the bits for it, but I potentially could then make electric furnaces up here. If not, well, I might need to move this entire thing further off somewhere else. So yeah, we should probably get rid of um, should, should get rid of this because this is just in the wrong place and it's ugly. So yeah, don't do that. Oh no, keep the power pole. So yeah, don't do that. Don't do that, Mike. <laughs>
But yes, he did make the smelteries. That's going well. Iron and copper. And yes, he needs. The, he now needs the cliff explosives. So that's on the to-do list. Tristan says he's added stackers. I'm. Uh, oh yes. Yeah, so so the, Tristan's been mostly, mostly, mostly playing with trains. So um, I, yeah, I think he likes playing with trains. So and he, he seems to be pretty good at it. So that's that's a, that's a good thing. So he's been putting the stackers on the inputs for these stations. We've got the um, high and low priority. So there's probably quite a lot of thinking went into getting all of that set up. So he's been he's been doing a lot of that stuff. Also a bit of the combat because basically everyone's been doing combat. <laughs> and. Um, and, and 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 making sure that the uh, we we now have a chunk aligned railway system for at least most of it not 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 this bit coming out this way because there's still some cliffs in the way but most of this all of these sort of main spine areas are chunk aligned which makes them really really easy to place down because you, you can use chunk aligned blueprints just go and put out a massive chunk of rail without with basically very very easily very very quickly very very easily and it just looks great and that's it that's everything we've um, that's everything we've been doing in the last episode so there's quite a lot of stuff left on the to-do list though because well of course there is but the the immediate things we're thinking about is <clears throat> a bit more westerly combat so as I was saying earlier we want to liberate this area and put a, a put a bottleneck across there we monitor this area but perhaps not put the walls in we shall see how that goes because these are some big old walls that are going to be needed to to make this area safe oh and across there as well um so yeah that sort of combat we really need to get oil processing going for several reasons this is one of the reasons although i could put more um, more more tanks in here to give to give us a bit more storage space to as, as, on, temporarily but generally we do need to have a lot we need to we need to start getting the oil processed mostly because we want cliff explosives because as you look around there's there's a problem there there's problems coming through here there's problems here and here there's problems here 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 there's just the cliffs are a pain we want to get rid of them and we've done we've done the cliff explosive research we've got we've got we are allowed to make allowed <laughs> we know about making cliff explosives we just can't make them because we don't have the um the well we don't have the uh let's have a quick look we don't have the, we can't make the explosives because we don't have the sulfur because we don't have the petroleum gas because we aren't processing the oil so we need to set up an oil processing facility somewhere we'll see whether this is enough oil we may need to start going out and putting in oil mines maybe here maybe and probably not there because that's going to get overrun by the smeltery area um finding oil is going to be interesting um <laughs> but they might have to use this one for the time being and just try and find some more oil, or or just hope that the uh, the stuff coming out of the uh, the core mining is enough. We shall see how that goes. I want to make stack inserters because stations with fast inserters are a bit pathetic, almost as pathetic as stations with um, slow inserters, which we do have a few of, like um, this one, which is just, which is just ridiculous. The train sits there for three days trying to fill up. So stack ins yep, stack inserters are high on my list of things I want to do. Um, I need to fix the pyroflux power here, as I was talking about. We're thinking we want to get solar up and running. Um, because we're ripping through quite a lot of coal down here just to make just to keep the um, all of this running and it's producing a lot of pollution and pollution is bad and we're 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 making big pollution clouds so getting solar power up and running and perhaps covering areas like this or maybe or maybe just covering this whole area down here with solar panels would produce a lot of power and would get things working quite nicely on that front so I think getting solar up and running is, is, is something we want to do even if we then don't necessarily get accumulators up and running um, because at least that then even though we'd still need to have these dirty dirty steam engines and and and, and uh, boilers it would at least halve the amount of pollution they'd be putting out because the solar would work during the day and then we'd only need these during the night so we'll, we'll see how that goes even despite that we are still going to need more more coal because all of our smelting at the moment depends on fuel all of our trains run on fuel we, we just we just need coal and we need coal for ammunition we need coal for grenades we're going to need coal for we may want coal for for making oil if we can't find any any more decent oil patches and the other thing about um about uh, space exploration now or Crastorio I forget which is that these are now finite oil patches so you'll notice this is 2.5 million rather than 1200 percent or something and that's because there is literally 2.5 million oil available in that patch once that's gone the patch is done and we can't get any more from it this one's slightly bigger at 3.8 million um, so maybe we should be trying to dig this up before we and then um, and then expand the smeltery over it later once it's gone I don't know we'll, 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 we'll have a think about that but yeah there's lots of things we need to think about like how we're going to get all of this to, 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 to work and how we're going to make sure we don't run out of all the resources we need core mining is a big help with that because it does produce genuinely free resources it just uses power but you have to worry about the balance of all of the different things and i think the rare metals are going to be a problem unless you just turn them all into landfill or pulverize them out into into just dust that blows away in the breeze we're going to have we're going to have a bit of a worry about having too much of this same with mineral water that can be vented through a uh, through a flare stack though so that's 
a thing we can we can get rid of it if we need to but again there's, there's just things you need to worry about rather than just digging it up and saying here is some pure coal you've got to deal with all of this sort of things Tristan wants to put some uh, greenhouses in above the smeltery, which makes a lot of sense to stop, basically to stop this pollution cloud spreading up and get, exciting these guys up here. Maybe we should put in a, a, a defensive wall across there to um, to stop, so that this area is sort of on its own, but it'll stop any biters that try to come down this way. That might be that might be sensible. Um, and more bus drop stations. So at the moment we're only dropping off iron onto the bus here. We need to then start doing that with copper and probably with coal and stone and stone bricks and fuel and everything else. Just get everything coming in by train into this area. And the final thing to report out on is, I suppose, is, is the death count. So currently in the lead is Mike with six deaths. Second place is Mark who has a three. He's got two. Oh, he, he had them on the northern expansion uh, last week. Um, and then myself in, <clears throat> myself in third place with one. And somehow Tristan hasn't died yet. Now, nearly all of those deaths were to, to worms, um, except for except for mine, which was to biters. So the bite, the, the worms are doing uh, are winning at the moment, at least on the on the number of uh, kills they've managed to get through. There's a few few worm um, biters coming through there, but they they were dealt with by the by the one single turret here. That's all we need, really. Um, so yeah, the, the worms are doing quite well. The biters not so well, and Mark is uh, sorry, Mike is doing most spectacularly, I suppose. <laughs> However, we want to look at that. So thank you for watching. I hope that's been interesting. I've given, as I said, there's lots of other stuff we want to be doing in, in, in the up and coming episodes. Uh, one thing notable is that we have the um, the blue and grey tech cards on the to-do list here. So those those I think we need to do before we can get much more going on in the um, in the science sciencery stuff. Because yeah, we're, we're getting to the point now. I think we, oh yes, we've done all of the research that doesn't require either um, uh, violent or blue. Um, military or grey or blue, yeah, those ones. So we, we get we get getting on well with those, but we now need to we now need other other packs and military tech for those, and what is this chemical chemical tech for those? So yeah, stuff to, stuff to do to get that up and running. Um, those are those are probably my next priorities after all the other stuff I've just been talking about. So come along on Monday to uh, to watch us play. We start playing at 7:30 UK time, and we'll carry on playing until we realise it's bedtime, or actually usually till about an hour after we realise it's bedtime. Uh, then on Wednesdays I shall be streaming Dyson Sphere program. Thursdays we've got some um, little bits of Minecraft going on there. I don't know how many more streams I'm going to be doing of those. It partly depends on how busy life gets and how much other stuff I'm trying to do, um, but we'll we'll see, we'll see about that. And then at the weekend, we've got the, uh, the catch-up episodes coming out for the, for the various streams during the week. And maybe a miscellaneous something else video on Friday. So, I hope you'll uh, you'll, you'll make sure you're subscribed uh, to the channel so you can see all of that stuff when it comes out. Uh, please do subscribe. The more the more I can get, the better things the better things will go and the more videos I can make for you. And then I'll uh, see you in the next video. So, thanks for watching and I'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>